Hey guys, wasn't it exciting at the end of the chapter to hear that Salvador's family needs a ride to the same state that Coyote wants to go to? Hmm, it's a pretty big coincidence, but I think it's pretty cool. All right, chapter 25. And just like that, our bus was back to being full. For the first time ever, Rodeo skipped the three questions for our new rider. I'm guessing because she was really just joining folks who were already on, and so that was like a loophole or something. Salvador and Miss Vega and Miss Vega's sister, Concepcion, all piled up onto Jaeger with their suitcases and duffels and hubcaps. While Miss Vega explained what was going on to Rodeo and Lester, I dragged Salvador back to my room so he could give me his version. We sat down at the edge of my mattress and he laid it out for me. Okay, so this is like a total train wreck, he said. What happened to the job for your mom? There was never a job. Salvador spit his face tight with anger. Chris told my Tia there was a job, but it turns out Chris was full of it, which is no surprise to anyone except my Tia because Chris has always been full of it. So they get up here and my Tia keeps asking about where the job is and Chris keeps lying and stalling. And then she wakes up this morning and there's some dumb note from him saying he's sorry but he's just like not ready for all the responsibility of a relationship or whatever. And he's gone, like totally gone with his car and his stuff and most of their money. You serious? His eyes flashed at me. Does it sound like I'm joking? He snapped and I pulled my head back, but he clicked his tongue and turned his eyes down a little and said right away, I'm sorry, I'm just like super mad. No, no, I get it. I reached back and scooped up Ivan from where he was curled up at the end of the bed and handed him to Salvador. Ivan shot me an ears back look, but he's chill, so he went with it. Salvador sat with Ivan in his lap and scratched his head and Ivan leaned into it and started purring. And I saw Salvador's shoulders relax just a tad. Cat therapy works. I sat for a minute, letting Ivan work his magic. Then I pushed on. So, um, Yakima? Oh, well, there's an actual job. Not through Chris either. My Tia used to work with a lady and they were tight. And when all this started to go down, my Tia called her. She's working at a hotel in Acuma, Acuma, Acuma. Actually, her and her sisters like own it and her husband like own it, sorry. Anyway, she says she's got jobs for my mom and my Tia, 100% for sure. We just gotta get there. I'm sorry we keep messing up your plans. I spread my hands and grinned. Are you kidding? This is perfect. Now we have an excuse to go all the way to Washington. Kind of expected Salvador to smile back and maybe give me a high five or something. But he just nodded and looked down his hands. And I realized that the secrets he'd shouted and realized that this whole thing probably wasn't as much fun for him as it was for me. I took my smile down a notch and said, Salvador, I'm really sorry all this is happening to you and your mom. And he shot me a suspicious look and said, sorry, you're not breaking our promise, are you? And I said, of course not. And he nodded and said, good. And then we both agreed it was probably time for a game of Uno. Rodeo is always saying how the universe seeks balance. Just like with a lot of things Rodeo says, I'm not entirely sure what he means, but I do know that only a few hours after the bad news about Chris and the jobs and everything, the universe gave us another passenger and she was most definitely on the positive side of the scale. Her name was Val and this is how she ended up with us. We'd driven all the long day through the upper pencil of Michigan Salvador's aunt volunteered for a three hour driving shift, which I thought was awful nice. 
I spent most of it sitting up behind her with Miss Vega, chatting and laughing. They were close, those two. They told me all sorts of funny stories about when they were growing up. There was quite an incident involving ketchup squirted on a white quinceanera dress. It was nice spending time with sisters who knew each other and loved each other. Plus, Concepcion had a laugh like I'd never heard, loud and sudden and rowdy. I couldn't help but laugh along when she did, even if I didn't get the joke. Anyway, sometime late that evening, when we were out of Michigan through Wisconsin and into Minnesota, and it was already starting to get dark and some folks were settling into sleeping positions, we stopped at a gas station to give Jaeger a fresh tank. I was a desperate kind of starving and headed into the little store and got me one of those spicy hot dogs they always have spinning on those rolly stove things. I love them. Give me one of those and a cold bottle of squirt, which I also bought, of course, and I'm in heaven. I honestly ain't sure exactly what squirt is supposed to taste like, but I do know that what it does taste like is absolutely refreshing perfection. I was already one bite into the dog and heading back out to Jaeger when I saw her. Well, really, I heard her. She was sitting on the pavement up against the store and she sniffled, just a little sniffle, but it caught my ear and I stopped in my tracks and then backed up a step to stand in front of her. She was wearing ripped up jeans and a black hoodie and she had a nose ring, which I've always thought was kind of awesome. When I stopped, she looked up at me and I saw her eyes were all red rimmed. You all right? I asked. Her eyebrows dropped and her eyes narrowed like she was getting ready to answer all tough. And then the toughness in her eyes gave way to wetness. She rolled her eyes and I saw them fill up before she looked away from me. No, she answered and her voice broke when she said it. What's the matter, you thumbing? She blinked at me. What's that mean? Her voice was hoarse. You know, hitchhiking, looking for a ride somewhere. Her eyes filled up again. Yeah, I guess. Well, where are you headed? She shrugged again, then coughed at a dry laugh with no funny in it whatsoever. Away. You running away? She snorted. Not exactly. More like kicked out. Kicked out of your home? How come? She looked at me a second, sizing me up, then shook her head. All right, when Salvador first got back on the bus, he was very angry, but she handed him Ivan and he was able to kind of calm down while he was doing something that was relaxing. We want you to put in a private comment what do you do when you're feeling stressed out and need to relax? What is something that you do when you are stressed out and need to relax?